Well, hello. Welcome. I'm Carl, a member of the CK12 team, and my colleague Lindsay and I will be running today's webinar, CK12 Platform for Non-STEM Users. We're so glad that you've joined us. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay. Before working for CK12, I taught high school English and video production for 10 years, so I'm really excited to be one of the instructors on today's webinar. Because even though I didn't teach a math or a science subject, there are so many ways I could have used the CK12 platform to make my teaching easier and help students with their learning. So I can't wait to give you guys some ideas. But wait a second, Lindsay. I taught math for 17 years, so I don't have to be here? <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. The CK12 CEP program has been overwhelmed with the response to this year's program. We love all the great feedback we've gotten um, from you as you venture through these sessions. It's also been great to get so many interesting questions. These help make our sessions much more interactive and engaging. Just to update you on some numbers, we have over 1,200 participants registered for webinar sessions from 56 countries. That's amazing. We know that nine in the morning and three in the afternoon Pacific time are not ideal for all of our friends around the globe, but you guys are making it work and we are really thankful. Please continue to use our chat window as a place to introduce yourself, share where you work, what you teach. It looks like a lot of you are off to a great start with that already. Just a reminder to you to, that when you're sending chat messages, make sure you do it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see your comments. As a small nonprofit, we re really rely on our educators to spread the word to their networks about CK12 and the free resources we offer. So I just wanna give a shout out to some of the educators who tweeted using hashtag CK12 certified. Hello to our friends in Poway Unified School District in California. They shared this amazing picture of middle and high school science teachers spending the day learning how to use our resources. That's awesome. That's awesome when you've got the team together and everybody's working on professional development over the summer. And then a shout out to Tom, who didn't let a power outage at home keep him from joining one of our recent learning management systems. He's tweeted several times, but I got a kick out of this one. He had to go to a Barnes and Noble um, to continue with his professional development. So that's awesome, Tom. And then I was excited to see Mick Shuren is getting his cert certification this summer. He tweeted out a screenshot of Jonathan Wood and we interviewed both John and Mick a few years ago in Tullahoma. And we know that there's great things happening in Tennessee. Then Efren was on our Customizing Adaptive Practice and Assignments webinar yesterday afternoon, and he, he tweeted that he can now do balancing equations using fill-in-the-blank questions. So that's awesome. Um, if you're a Twitter user, don't forget to follow the CK12 Foundation. We love reading and sharing the tweets that you post with the hashtag CK12 certified. Lindsay, what do you say we pause right here for a second to find out a little bit more about our participants on this webinar? We're going to launch a poll with a few questions. What non-STEM subject areas are you hoping to learn more about during this webinar? And you can um, choose multiple ones there. And what time zone are, or area are you in right now? So we'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. All right, looking pretty good here. About 60% of you have voted. We'll give you a few more seconds to try to understand this and figure out where you are in the world. And if you're in Antarctica, just put that in the chat window. All right, final clicks as we enter the minute mark here and we'll go ahead and close the poll and share the results with you. So um, you can see here that language arts is a really popular area people want and social studies, foreign languages then, and arts and other got 41% of the vote. So could you please chat out in the uh, chat window what subjects, areas you'd be interested in 
Um, and then time zone. We have a lot of people in the east. So good evening. It's dinner time. And we appreciate you having dinner with, um, with CK12. And then it looks like a variety of Asia there, some Africa, Oceania. Beautiful. Well, thank you to everybody. We appreciate you being here. It's great to see that we're getting coverage from around the world. It's, um, as you've heard numerous times already in, in uh, already, CK12 has the most coverage for STEM content, specifically middle school and high school math and science. But our platform can be used in a variety of ways for a variety of subjects. So today, Lindsay and I are going to talk you through different ways of using our platform for non-STEM content. Specifically in this webinar, we'll be covering the following content. CK, uh, sorry, non-STEM CK12 content, navigating the schools page, finding community contributed content, creating Flexbook from scratch, and writing your own questions. Don't forget, we have a resource page for for all of our sessions available in Google Classroom. We'll put the link to the PDF in the chat window right now. And if any of you would like to access it, go ahead and click. We hope, when you're, we hope that you're finding these pages useful and um, as you work on your assignments and strategize, you can use this page to make it easier. All right, let's start talking about CK12's content offered in non-STEM subjects. I think it's helpful to remind everyone about the CK12 Foundation's main priority when it comes to developing content for our users. One of CK12's missions is to advance learning of science and math with world-class, multimodal, free, customized curriculum content and assessment on a digital platform that will lead to personalized instruction and reduced workload for teachers. So one question we get all the time, so I might as well knock it out for you guys right now, because you're all non-STEM folks, or a lot of you are, maybe you're here learning about it to pass along information to a colleague, but it's when is CK12 going to expand their content to offer more non-STEM areas? And the short answer is probably not anytime soon. Um, we have comprehensive coverage for middle school and high school math and science, and I've already started building out more elementary content, such as our K through five science books. We're working on new interactive common core math books, and our developers are working on the upcoming Flexbooks 2.0 release. Our interactives team is making more clicks and sims, and so most of the initiatives at CK12 focus on enhancing our math and science content to personalize learning for students. Our steady growth in the other subject areas is all thanks to teachers like you who are creating content on our site and sharing it with users from around the world. So the first thing I wanna show you in this webinar is the non-STEM content that CK12 has available for you. On our homepage, if you guys are showing all of the subjects that CK12 offers on the homepage, you'll see a few English branches and then more branches. So if you were to click on those branches, some of the flex books that you're going to see in these different subject areas include, you know, under the writing branch, we have a common sense composition book, we have a journalism book, and then the Glyphata method, which is about essay writing. For spelling, we do have um, really comprehensive coverage for our basic speller. We have a student edition and we have a teacher edition. History, we have a US history source book, both advanced and basic. And then for health, actually I saw in the chat window, we didn't have health as one of our um, options on there, but I think a lot of the other folks that you, you said you're from the health category. We do have a health core book, um, skills for a healthy me, and then a teen health literacy book as well. So unlike our math and science concepts, um, where you would arrive at a concept page that looks like this and you would see a lot of different modalities like reads and flicks and videos, practice, real world activities. Most of the non-STEM subjects that I just showed you just have flex books that CK12 has put on the site. Spelling is an exception. It has adaptive practice questions as well. That doesn't mean that we don't have interdisciplinary concepts that would work well in your subject area. For instance, if you've attended our interactives webinar, um, we had one this morning, then you've seen our math and science clicks. 
Our interactives team actually makes an effort to keep non-STEM subjects in mind when creating their PLICs. Depending on your subject that you teach, we might have PLICs that would be perfect for your area of study, or even some that lend themselves to a cross-disciplinary unit. Um, you know, in schools right now, I was talking to a teacher who was saying that she was feeling so much pressure to add in math content because it's something that's tested at their school and the administrators are pushing to like across all subject areas, you know, really focus on the skills that are going to be tested or the same way that, that everybody's being asked to include more literacy, more reading to help with, with, with assessment. So it's not a bad idea to start thinking about some of these um, activities that cross over several different disciplines. So what you're looking at right now, um, this is a graphs of systems, graph of systems of linear equations in two variables. And this is actually talking about President Jefferson's octagonal home. So we got a little bit of social studies overlapping with math here. In art, um, this is one that's all about angles and lines and a perspective drawing. So it's using graphs um, intercepts to create line designs. A connection to fashion here, um, you're using a mat matrices to, um, to mimic a houndstooth pattern. For all of those in cooking or in home ec, uh, we've got several clicks actually that would talk about measurements. This one's on teaspoons and cups and milliliters, um, helping to make that leap from, from math to what goes on in the kitchen. And then also like this is on photography. Um, stem and leaf plots and histograms. Uh, I try to take photos and I'm always confused by my histogram, so I should study up on this. Um, lots of great activities here. Um, so don't, be, don't, don't automatically think that, hey, if this tool is mostly used for STEM subjects, that it wouldn't be something that would appeal to you. Okay, um, I'm gonna steal the presentation here for a second from Carl, and I'm gonna go live to our homepage. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like with some real clicks here. So when you're browsing CK12 for non-STEM subjects, um, just kind of a note, hopefully you guys are getting pretty, pretty good at navigating our site, but the, the site starts to you know, pick on your favorites here and it'll hide some subjects. So I'm gonna show all of my subjects on the homepage to make sure that I can see all of the branches that I was referring to. So we've got our math, we've got our science, and then here are the English and more that I was talking about. So I'm gonna go to the writing tab. Again, sorry, selfishly, I, to I told you I used to teach English. So um, the Common Sense Composition Book um, is an interesting one to start with. And all of you folks who said that you're ELA, um, this might be a book that would have some good resources for you. So this is one of our flex books. And you see a table of contents. Um, this one has a lot of the, you know, the essay types, um, basics on writing. It's got some information on tone, parts of speech. Um, if you're curious, which, which I would be of, okay, how did this book come to be? Um, on this details tab over here, you can usually get hints at uh, where this book came from. So here I get an author and the editor is from San Jose State University. This is actually a, uh, a book that San Jose State put together and they've offered it up to our site. Um, a lot of our materials were gifted to us. Um, and so this is a book that's, that you are now able to use as is or you're able to customize and take different parts of it. Um, but don't forget that, yeah, that details tab has some handy information. Um, it was created on our site in 2012, but the last big modification was in 2015. Um, we've got a little information about how it follows the, the California language arts standards right there. Um, so if I wanted to get this in the hands of my students right away, and I'm like, ah, I'm sold. This is the perfect book for me. Um, I'd probably want to read it first, but uh, I can always take this link up here, this unique URL, and I could put it on my web page, I could share it with students, and they could start using this book right away. Free, everything on CK12 is always free. Um, another option is that I can click customize, and you guys who've been in a, um, a, a Flexbook editing, advanced Flexbook, or are getting started with Flexbooks, you've seen this process happen, that when I press customize, a copy of this book essentially is placed in my library, and now I can make changes to it. I can um, change my title, I can add in my own image. 
I can reorder these chapters. I can delete chapters. I can add in my own content. Now all of a sudden I'm making this book work for me. So even if, if, if you're looking for an ELA book and you like two of these chapters or you like all of the, the different essay types and you're like, okay, I only want four chapters from this book. You could delete all the rest or you could start your own book and you could always add in these chapters from this book. So we don't know if we're going to have the perfect solution for you right out of the gate, but maybe we, maybe we get you halfway there. Maybe we get you 60%, 70% of the way there. Um, we could get you started and then you can make edits after that. Okay. I'm going to go back out um, here. It's going to get angry because I didn't save it, but I'm just demoing here. Um, I told you that our spelling was a little bit different. When you go to our spelling, you see that we have a concepts tab that we didn't have for the writing section. This is because we've broken down our spelling similar to how we do our math and science, um, that they are by concept. Here we've got a lot of you know, letter sounds, vowel sounds, and then we've got our two books over here under the Flexbook tab, the basic, basic Speller Student Edition and the Teacher Edition. Um, but here, if you opened any of these, um, I'm just going to open one of these reads on spelling, or sorry, the concept page. I could open the read here, which is the lesson, or it's got the practice that goes with it. So that's the biggest difference, I guess, with the non-STEM content is that spelling is the only subject that has practice ready to go that is not under the math and science umbrella. But let's go up here to the search bar. Uh, we like to encourage everybody to, to come to the CK12 search bar instead of the wild, wild west of Google and who knows what's gonna come up. So I was talking about photography earlier. Even if I just, let's just search. Let's just search photography. And while well, that's not, you know, its own branch within CK12, even just the keyword search of photography pulled up a lot of CK12 content here. So I can see that this is a real world activity. Um, this is the plex that I showed you earlier. We've got another real world activity. So there are some resources. If you did some key term searches, you'd probably be surprised at what comes up that might relate to the topic that you guys are looking for. Um, even like how our key searches work of, um, we were talking about Jefferson's house earlier. Um, if you just search Jefferson, if you were looking for president Jefferson, um, the flicks comes right up. So that's just a really quick tour of how you can search CK 12 for CK 12 created content. Um, probably what's going to be more exciting is here in a second when I show you all of the resources that our users have contributed. Um, to our site. But why don't we pause for just a second and I'm going to check in with Carl and see if anything's been coming into our Q&A that we need to address. Well, Lindsay, you've been doing an outstanding job because all the questions have been answered and there are no kind of pending questions. So I'll um, kind of throw it back to our, our users out there. Make sure you put your questions in the Q&A window. We'd love to answer them, but you seem to be doing a good job. <laughs> Congrats. So far, so good. Okay, um, I think we're gonna go back to um, our keynote presentation, Carl. So he's gonna steal the screen back. Alrighty, so we're gonna press play again and we'll move on. So one thing that many users don't realize about CK12 is that a large portion of our site falls under what we call community contributed content. This is a huge growth area for us, as more districts are using open resources and using teachers to curate and customize content instead of purchasing through publishers, you'll continu continue to see more and more non-STEM, even advanced placement and international baccalaureate books on our site. One of the best places to see some of the books um, schools and districts are creating is from our schools page. So you can find this on the home page. You do need to make sure that you are logged in as a teacher. Up in the left-hand side, you can always tell if you're logged in as a teacher. I am because it's asking me to switch to a student version. Um, students see a slightly different view of the homepage, and they don't have that schools icon um, under Explore. But that is where you're going to find it, under Explore. It's easy access to our simulations, our flicks, our adaptive practice, and then schools icon if you're a teacher. 
or you can always use www.ck12.org slash schools. Um, I, I like the circle, but yeah, quick access is to get to slash schools. So when you arrive at the schools page, no matter how you did it, it's gonna pull up books in the state you are in. It does this geotagging. So here it knows that we're in California right now. And it pulled up any books that schools have published and elected to put on the site and tag to a specific school or district. So this is, this is important. Sometimes people get to this page and they think, oh, those are the only schools using CK12, but I know that you know, the school down the street's using it, the school you know, 10 minutes away from me is using it. Um, this is a special process as far as people who create books and they tell us that they want to put their book on our site. So you're seeing a small portion. Um, I'm talking about it to you guys today because I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that you're going to create awesome books and you're going to put them on the site so everybody can easily find them. Um, so if you're wanting to start this process, um, if you see that your school is not here, you guys half of you are probably searching right now to see if your school is listed, your area is listed. Um, if you need to claim your school's page, uh, you probably need to think of the appropriate person to claim your school. Uh, it's usually somebody who's like a technology coordinator or curriculum director or another administrator. Um, it's not often kind of an individual teacher if you're trying to, um, you know, claim, claim a school or district page. It might need to be somebody who's, who's higher up for that. Um, but when you click on any school, you should see a claim your school option at the top. And then you're going to get this pop-up window. And it's pretty simple. It's just instructions for how you're going to um, send CK12 an email. And we've given you the email template already, just saying, hi, I'd like to cl claim my school's page. Here's my job title. Here's my school phone. Here's my school website, my name. And so CK12 goes through the proper channels to make sure you are who you say you are and that we're feeling good about giving you um, access to our page. And then you as the person who's claimed the page, whoever that ends up being, they're able to add books, take books down, they're in control over what you view for your individual school. So um, I think there's information on our resource handout and I'll talk about that again if you're interested in, in claiming your school. So there are a few districts that um, I wanna highlight because of their quality non-STEM books that they've made available for anyone to use. And one district is uh, EPISD, as we call them, El Paso Independent School District in Texas. And you probably hear us mention them quite a bit if you're on a bunch of our webinars. Um, and that's because they've been a longtime partner with us and they're a huge district and they've done so much work in this area and they're constantly building flexbooks. Um, they're committed to going open and they systematically create new flex books each year with teams of teachers, writers, and editors. They've really got this process down at this point. Um, you can see on their schools page um, in Texas, you can, Carl, I'm going to send you to the, there we go. We're going to go to the schools page. So this is what the El Paso Independent School District page looks like, where you can see a lot of their books listed. And on the screen, you can see they've got an AP US history book, AP government, macroeconomics, sociology, world history, and so many more. Um, I worked with some of their teachers just a few months ago, earlier this spring, and they were writing English books and Spanish books and other social studies books for the upcoming school year. Um, so again, different from our CK12 content of, um, I can tell you nobody here within the CK12 walls, we have not gone line by line, page by page through these books. Um, we know that we've got awesome leadership over at El Paso who's working on these books and we can speak to the process they're going through. But that's why we kind of partition our site between things that CK12 has curated, vetted, you know, gone through a publisher-like process for versus our community contributed. We're a little more hands-off with the idea that, um, that school districts are just getting resources up on our site that they wanna share with others. Um, Cause that's, that's the beauty of the education. We're all just trying to help each other out. Um, Tim Holt is our friend who uh, is one of the leaders for this initiative in El Paso. And we're gonna show um, a quick video here in a second um, where he speaks to the CK12 partnership and why he thinks it's so important to share resources with others. One of the neat things about open education resources, Creative Commons, CK12, is that when you create something, 
it doesn't just stay with you. You actually have to put it back up for others to share. And so whatever you create becomes part of the larger community. So all the textbooks that EPISD has created are up online for anyone to use. And we encourage people to use them. We encourage people to give us feedback. You know, we, we know that we can always do a better job. And if there's a school district that wants to use our textbooks, please, please do. We actually have been, we have been contacted uh, over the years by many uh, school districts that are interested in saving money. They're interested in open education resources. They're interested in having control over their, you know, I think it, Apple calls it controlling the whole widget, you know, from beginning to end. And so when you control the curriculum, when you control everything, including the textbook, you're in control of the whole widget. And, uh, and that's something that CK-12 allows you to do. And EPISD is more than willing to share our processes. We're more than willing to share our books. So uh, that's, that's, that's part of the deal with CK-12 is that you're sharing uh, what you create. If you're interested in connecting with Tim Holt or anybody else we feature on these webinars, um, please email us at jumpstart at ck12.org. They're sincere. They, they want to help other users. I can't tell you how many times we've done digital introductions to Tim and said, hey, Tim, we've got this school in Ohio that's looking to um, go through a process similar to what EPISD did. And we can connect you. And again, the, the leaders of these districts, they, they're they want everybody else to be successful. They want to share. So you can always contact us and we'll, we'll introduce you to any of these folks that we feature. Um, another just, oh wait. I was just going to add both um, Tim Holt and coming up from Tullahoma, Dan Lawson are very active on Twitter and they're easily found on Twitter and they, they both post a lot and they post really meaningful things. So you might want to follow both Dan in Tullahoma and Tim from El Paso. Absolutely. Um, this screen, this is just some of our little screenshots here of our friends in Tullahoma, Tennessee, um, Tullahoma City Schools. Um, they're another district that, that we talk about frequently because, you know, while EPISD, they started their process with science books, Tullahoma started when they were up for a social studies adoption and decided to create books instead of purchasing them. So that year they used their money to purchase technology for their schools. What they didn't spend on textbooks, um, they spent on devices. Uh, they followed up year one and they've continued to expand to other subject areas such as language arts. Um, but, it's, but it's interesting because I, I, I would say a lot of districts start maybe with our math or our science, but Tullahoma, they, they saw the vision, they saw the potential of CK-12. They were looking for a place to organize their resources. They needed to be able to push it out to different students. And they thought, hey, we can use this platform for a lot of, you know, to, to organize these other subjects. Um, they had teams of people looking into the social studies content. They were using open source, license compliant um, resources and putting it in our books. But CK-12 was offering what nobody else was, which was a free platform which would create a book out of all of these documents that would otherwise just live in a chaotic state and somebody's drive somewhere. Um, when you arrive at the Tullahoma schools page, uh, you're going to see things like social studies books for grades four through eight. There are ELA books for elementary. There's first grade and third grade and on up through high school. There's ninth and tenth grade. Um, they have localized their books to best fit their area. That's a benefit to customizing books. Um, in their social studies books, they're, they're very proud to tell you that they have a Tullahoma graduate who um, has gone on to be a Grand Ole Opry star. So, of course, they've got, they insert the image. They talk about how he was a graduate of their schools. Um, it's fun. They think learning, you know, comes alive. Kids are more engaged when they're reading about people like themselves. It keeps them motivated and excited about curriculum. So we love that ability to, to localize these books. Um, in the Tullahoma books, if you were to, to scroll through some of them, um, open up some of the different chapters, you would see that they kind of standardize the process um, where their books are, are set up the same way. They have some objectives, they align to the Tennessee state standards, they have a certain kind of style guide that they follow um, that works for them. So 
if you're in another state, if you're in New Jersey and you're looking to use um, an ELA book, um, you're probably not going to be able to grab and go one of these Tennessee Tullahoma books um, because they do. They have a lot of language about their state standards and things like that. But um, do they have some individual reads and lessons and chapters that you could put in your book? I guarantee you there's some good stuff housed in there that will make your life easier when you're working on your own books. Um, several of us here at CK12 had the opportunity to visit Tullahoma, and so I'm going to show you just a series of short interviews with some of their teachers and administrators that I think is going to help give you a, you know, a, a taste for their experiences with CK12 Flexbooks. And the first person you're going to see here, Dan Lawson, became a CK12 certified educator last summer and tweeted out to all the other superintendents to match his efforts here. So you might encourage your, your superintendent of your district to become a CK12 educator just like Dan. Yeah, I, th I think more accurately, concurrently with the devices, we had a push for OER. We spent some time at Rice University looking at the OpenStax program and we're really involved in a discussion that said we really wish we could find something like this for K-12 environment. As we started doing some research, ran across CK-12 and realized this is that missing link that we're looking for. This is something that will connect our devices to our kids with standards-based instruction that we think is valuable for them. So it, it really provided a, a sorely needed niche and connection that is invaluable for us. I, I think it's obviously the future for, for education. And I think that CK-12 is only gonna allow us to um, help to personalize and blend learning, which is, is the direction that our education program needs to head, not just Tillamah City Schools, but the nation as a whole. We need to offer what the kids need. We need to offer directly what the kids need, in addition to the adults as well. So, if we're not if we're not personalizing, you know, personalizing it using technology, then uh, we're falling behind. And and CK CK one two, it's one of those tools that that helps us uh, move forward. It's the great thing about CK12 is they have a community contributed tab. So teachers are able to go access not only content that CK, CK12 has vetted, but also content that underground users have vetted or other districts have vetted. So teachers are able to go out and pull a textbook complete uh, match to the standards and they can start utilizing CK12 today without a lot of investment on curating their own content. As they work through the textbook, the beauty of CK12 is if they find some content that they want to add in addition to what CK12 has provided or another district has provided, they can go and add that content as they go. So, so they are constantly developing their textbook as a living document the entire time they're teaching their curriculum. Our day when we do CK12 or when we do a lesson in here starts with Google Classroom. That's where I put all of the lessons. I put all the links to CK12 there. They do have their own CK12 account and they do have the sixth grade textbook in their library and they can access it, any of the lessons, anytime from that particular place. The, the lessons follow the Tennessee state standards. Whatever I'm supposed to teach, that's what we wrote about and that's what we included in to meet those standards. We might have an activity that links to an outside source. I might have it just written in there. I might link to a video. But that's an everyday thing. We don't just sometimes use CK-12. We use CK-12 all the time, every day in some manner. Um, I'm here, it is not a get on the computer and just do your lesson without a teacher involvement because I handle this just like it's a textbook except it's on a computer. I use it more as a teacher resource instead of regularly assigning them chapters. I use it to house all of my instructional information and then I will 
piecemeal, um, piecemeal give it to them as I want them to have it. So for me, it's like having all of my unit notebooks, but 10 times better because I can access it whenever I want and I can add all of those digital resources and access them wherever I need to. So that's just a few of the hundreds of testimonials that we've collected from teachers and administrators across the country. Um, in that last series, uh, you know, Carl was telling you about Dr. Uh, Dan Lawson. You also saw his wife, Karen Lawson. They're both uh, CK-12 certified um, educators. You saw Mick Sharon, who's, we showed you his tweet earlier. We know he's working on a certification this summer. And he has one of our favorite lines of all of our video footage, which is when he says, CK-1-2. Um, we love that here in the office. Um, I hope these video clips continue to give you some ideas for implementation. You can go to ck12.org slash testimonial. We truly have hundreds of these if you're looking for um, bite-sized pieces or for those of you who are sharing with colleagues or going to do any sort of professional development at the beginning of the school year. Um, it's great to kind of pick some of these that apply to your situation to share um, with your groups. Okay, so the next thing I want to discuss is finding community contributed content through our search feature. So I'm going to go back to um, uh, my homepage here. Let me steal the screen back from Carl. So we are back on CK12. And I'm going to press the icon. This is always a great way just to get back to the homepage to make sure everybody knows where I'm starting here. Um, I'm going to go back up to the search bar and earlier what I typed in was photography. And we looked at what the CK12 content, uh, what CK12 content we had for photography. We pulled up our real world activities and our clicks and things like that. Um, what maybe you guys haven't really explored yet is the second tab that says community contributed. And so still on our same subject of photography, no longer is this the section, you know, this isn't the CK12 curated vetted content. We have authors that we can see. So this was by um, Stephen. Um, we can tell this is by EPISD Journalism. And these are different resources that have been uploaded to our site. And so, I don't know, let's check this out. It says it's a read, which is like a lesson. So we've got some text here. It looks like this is, you know, about building a digital portfolio. We've got some images, some instructions. Um, so that might give me some ideas. Uh, if I wanted to add this to one of my Flexbooks, there's a button over here that just says add to Flexbook textbook. So I can just, I can, I can take and reuse this lesson. That's the awesome thing on our site. Of anything up here, you guys are able to reuse. Uh, photography and yearbook, let's check this one out. So again, we just highlighted um, EPISD, looks like they're talking about learning basics, sports photography, um, different shots here. Um, all of these images they would have pulled from um, a site that would allow uh, their license. And so we should have some attributions down here for our different figures. And I'm going to talk to you about making sure that you have added attributions to content in just a second. Um, that was just searching for photography. If I search for something, um, even say I teach AP English. I'm just going to type in AP English here and cross my fingers and hope that something shows up. And okay, English, overview of vowels, that's CK12 content. So again, I've got to flip over to the community contributed tab here. And I can see that we've got analogy practice by somebody named Natalie who created a book. Hacking into Literature, Life, and Ourselves, AP, English Lit, and Comp, 2015, 2016. Okay, so this is, if I were actually teaching AP English, I would be interested in what's housed in this book. Um, we've got Table of Contents, Summer Reading, this is probably the teacher's summer reading list, um, some poems of the day. Uh, if nothing else, this would give me just kind of a glimpse at how another teacher organized their resources, how they're using our platform to push out content to students. So don't be afraid to type in like a subject, something like AP English and see what comes up in that community contributed tab. And then if you're curious, you want a quick access to like, we were talking about EPISD, I can even just type in EPISD and we're alerting you to, hey, here's, here's CK12's partnership with EPISD and it's a pretty quick link to um, that, uh, their schools page. Uh, one thing that I learned this morning in the clicks and simulations um, webinar of even though these are simulations for physics and for chemistry, um, 
there is a real world uh, application section here. Uh, let's look at the gone fishing simulation. Um, so, okay, I'm not teaching math and science. You know, the simulation maybe doesn't at first glance apply to me. There's an introductory situation. I'm just gonna scroll through this to kind of get to what I'm talking about. So your math and science students are using some of these graphs, but we have a section at the end for all of these simulations that extends the learning and has some other real world activities. And notice that there's CK12 content here, but then there's also a community contributed tab. And this is really exciting. This is where students in a class have been coming up with their own real world activities as extension to this lesson and they're able to upload it to our site and our physics content manager goes through them and presses yes add to the community contributed tab for any of the ones that come in that, that look interesting so something like this is just an awesome way to collaborate if you have your favorite teacher across the hall who's teaching science who's teaching math um, again we're all about the the multidisciplinary like you know to, to combine everything together um, this would be an opportunity for your students to be published and, and get on our site um one last thing i'll just show you again is the um the schools page um, i'm gonna go down here through the circle um, we had a user ask earlier um, can we access other states rather than our um, own states uh, i live in one state but teach across the river uh, it's as easy as flipping down this filter option so we were in california um, I'm from Kansas, so I'm going to click Kansas, and I can see some of these schools here. Okay, there's, there, there's some materials here. I've been working with Topeka schools a little bit. Um, so yeah, you can see these books, and then on the schools tab, we, we don't have every country listed right now, so if you're looking for international books, it's listed under international. And someday we'll probably have to separate that out in the countries, but right now we've got international books. Um, we have this these books from zurich are ib books they're math books i know that they probably don't excite most of you but they are international baccalaureate books i showed you some ap content later on or earlier um and then like i said our friends at epic i would definitely check out their books just to see if they have something in the area of what you're looking for i was excited because um they just released their new spanish book so episd spanish 1 2018 this was just written and I think is one of our first kind of Spanish language learning books on our site, I believe. But if you open this up, they've got learning goals, chapter outline, um, and then you start seeing videos and days of the week activities and lessons. I don't know, I'm gonna play more with this later on. Um, pretty exciting for, for Spanish, for any of you guys who are looking at languages there. So, um, if we don't have any questions then uh the q a is empty at the moment why don't carl's going to pull back up the keynote and i'm going to talk kind of the last section which is what if you guys don't see anything that you want to customize but you want to start your own from scratch All right, Carl's working on pulling up the keynote here. And he's struggling. This is the one thing about Zoom is when we flip from like a live window to a keynote, sometimes it takes just a second to get it all going here. Um, but while, while he's pulling that up, um, so there are lots of ways to search our site for community contributed content, but we're gonna talk to you about creating a book from scratch. And um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and go to the next slide of, this is kind of an outside of the box thing of, um, Katie and I were in Middletown, Delaware, uh, a couple months, maybe back in March. And we met one of our certified educators in 2017 named Dave Wessel. And he was a science teacher, so we were there looking at a science classroom, but then he kind of made an offhanded remark that like, oh yeah, we're, we're building a little cross flex book. And we were so intrigued by this, and this is this is just the start of it. But he had talked to the lacrosse coach, and he was he's Dave is the actual assistant coach, and they were trying to find a way to push out to their um, their their players like their their playbook, their manual. They were going to take footage of practice. They were going to have game footage analysis, 
and they couldn't figure out how to make it all work with links and you know again are they using google drive are they pushing it out and like this is something that students can read on any device they can use it through our offline reader um, so you can think beyond even kind of your traditional curriculum and start thinking about sports or you know other maybe personal interests or hobbies that you might have you can really create a book for pretty much anything um, so let's talk about creating a book from scratch Well, Carl, I'm gonna, yeah, Carl, why don't you talk to them about this, best practices with, um, if you're trying to do this in a collaborative way. Sure, um, we talked about this when I did the getting started with Flexbook session, but I think it would be good to review it right now because there's some really important things to think about even when creating non-STEM books. First off, you've got to form your curriculum teams. Put together the right group of people that can write the proper content. And then you need to, to assign one of these people to be the leader. And they're going to be the one in charge of the book. And then you create a flex book in a school or district account for that's not really a, like tied to some individual. For example, the Spanish department in EPISD uses Spanish at EPISD.org. That way, if, if personnel changes and stuff that we have, we already know the credentials to get in and continue working on our book. Then you might consider breaking up the work to write the book by chapter, like assign, you know, chapter one to Lindsay, chapter two to Michaela. Um, then use a common style guide. Have, um, have the look and feel of the book be the same so you can't tell there were possibly different authors there. Um, add in addition original content or open source content videos that you have access to um, that do comply with our Creative Commons license. And speaking of which, at CK12 here, we do use the Creative Commons uh, BY-NC 3.0. And because we're all lawyers, that makes total sense to us. Oh, wait. Um, we, we don't know what that means. So the, the key thing is the BY part means you have to attribute it to CK12. You have to give credit, appropriate credit. And you should indicate whether changes were made or not based on or exactly what is done there. And the NC stands for non-commercial, which means please don't sell what we gave you for free. While that sounds like it makes sense, some people don't quite understand that. So please, when under this copyright license, and there is copyright, that's why Creative Commons was made, the copyright license requires that you give us attribution and you don't sell it. Finally, we often travel to Go Open Summits where districts are committed to using open source resources. It's a great place to find out more information about using open educational resources. Not surprising, over half of the Go Open districts already use CK12 as one of the key ways of using their content in their district. Um, you can see here, they have a lot of different schools doing some incredible things. Lawrence Public Schools, Grossman, I was down with Dan McDowell and his team, that they have done an amazing job of creating science books and getting it board approved in order for all their teachers to have some really quality content. So Go Open is a really good initiative that you might want to look into. Um, you can request a um, download of the PDF, which is their launch packet. But um, if you're on the Twitter, you might consider doing hashtag Go Open and following that because I find that they have amazing content and a lot of people who are pioneers in this field are doing some amazing work and they're doing the work that you guys are doing right now. So Go Open is definitely something which is a great partner to CK12 because it's getting the word out about using OER resources like CK12. Okay, all good, con all good tips in creating and curating content. Um, the next thing I just want to briefly mention in passing, because I don't know how much you guys are going to want to dive into this, is uh, that you can write your own questions on our site. If you've seen our adaptive practice tool for, um, for math and science, uh, we don't have those questions for your non-STEM subjects. You guys can create questions on our site if you wanted to give your students a digital quiz. Um, you wouldn't have the ability to make it adaptive where it's going to adjust to their level of learning because that's our intelligent system for math and science. 
but you can create your own questions if you like, and these are the different question types that we offer. They're listed on the resource page as well. And the basic process for doing this is that you can pick a, pick a question, you can write the question prompt, you can add in answers, you can use some variables if you wanted, um, different ways of including these questions. So um, that, is, that is an option if you're somebody who's all about the digital and want to, um, to make questions that students are answering digitally on our site. So let me steal back the screen here and kind of go into a little grand finale, um, which is creating a book from scratch, which I want this tab here. So the library is what kicks off this process for creating a book from scratch, because in your library, we've got lots of fun stuff here. Um, you've got this create new button. And you could do a modality, which is what you would click to start a text lesson. Um, you can also click Flexbook Textbook, which is what we're going to do. And when I select Flexbook Textbook, this means I'm not modifying anything that I've seen on the site. You get just your empty, fresh start here. So um, I taught an IB film class, and I totally would have used CK12 if I'd known about it. Um, you can give your book a title, you can change the image here and I'm going to save it, and um, I have a blank table of contents. This is my demo account right now. Um, I need to start doing something with this book. So when I press edit, it's edit and not customize since this is new content here. It's going to pull up um, the option to add content. I need to add something. All I have is a blank table of contents. So I can start a new chapter here. I liked how somebody had their syllabus there earlier. So I'm going to just put my syllabus in here. So I'm going to add a chapter title. I could add descriptions and some other information, but I'm going to stick to the basics and just add a title. And so now I need some content. So I'm going to write a modality, which again, is just a fancy way of saying, pull me up a blank doc that I can type in. And I'm going to call this um, syllabus 2018. And it brings up an editor. Hopefully you guys are taking some other Flexbook sessions so you have seen this. I can start typing in text. I can add a pretty image. Um, I was gonna plug, I like the website Unsplash. Uh, it's a totally free, people have put up their photos. I just think they look kind of higher class than some other things. So if I wanted to find a totally free license compliant image for my syllabus, yeah, these, these are slick, they're nice. Um, I can download this and Unsplash says crediting isn't required, but I can copy really easily that this is by Jacob and it's from the website Unsplash. And when I go to add in an image here, I can find this image that I just downloaded. Oh, I'm almost afraid to press this. Um, oh, there we go. And I open this and I can give different image options. I'm just going to make this an inline image. I'm going to move it down to something reasonable like 400. And then my source was this guy Jacob, or no, sorry, my source was Unsplash, and then Jacob Owens is who I am crediting. Because of our license, we always want to make sure to um, give credit to the, um, the person on the site, even though it said that I didn't have to. We're going to anyway. So the site is thinking about inserting this image. We're waiting just a second. And there's my image. Um, another thing you can do is you can add multimedia. You guys who are wanting to add in um, some videos. Um, I was going to pick a clip here um, from, I've got to condense my screen here. Uh, again, for film class, we've got movie clips on YouTube, totally free because Fandango is doing some advertising. But hopefully you guys know how to pull, um, pull embed codes from YouTube videos. Oh no, this has an ad, it's going to take five seconds. But anyway, we're not listening to that. Um, so in one second, I'm going to skip my ad and then if you right click, that's how I do it on a video, you can copy your embed code. 
And when I go back and I add in multimedia, there is the embed code that I just took off of that video from YouTube. I can preview it. There's my clip and I can insert it. And you get just a blank box here when you're in, um, when you're in editing mode. So if I were to continue to build my book, that's just a little quick taste. Um, when I finalize my draft, we can see that I just, I, I started a book, right? Like here's this cool section that I added. We've got a video, we've got an, an image. There you can see how I've given it credit. I can go back to the master book. Um, I actually wanted my syllabus to fall under that chapter. So it's easy just to press edit. And I'm going to open up this chapter and I'm gonna drag my syllabus underneath there. And so I have saved my book. Um, lots of things you can embed. You can embed your Google Slides. Um, again, you can, you can do this customization process forever. This edit option is always here so you can continually work on your book. Right now, nobody else in the world can see this book because I haven't published it. It's not searchable, right? I could share this with my colleagues. If I want to be like, Carl, look at this cool book I made. Um, I can copy my URL and I could share it with Carl and Carl could look at the book. But unless I publish and unless I go through the schools page, you can rest assured like nobody's, nobody's looking at your drafts. You have to intentionally publish your finished product for everybody to see. So I'm gonna, I think, stop there. We're approaching the hour mark. I know Carl wants to give you a lot of good wrap-up information, and then we'll get back to the Q&A um, window and see if there's anything I can help you guys with as you've seen this presentation of what's, what's most relevant for you. Um, be typing some things in Q&A while Carl, Carl wraps up. All right, so as um, Lindsay said there, we are going to wrap up, but we will be staying on to answer your additional questions. So don't forget, there is a resource page. We mentioned it at the very beginning. We put these in this year as a brand new feature. You asked for it, and we decided to do it. So we hope you're finding them useful. If you have any feedback on them, please let us know. We'd love to make them even better. Um, you do have an assignment for, this is one of the official four accreditation uh, sessions, so the assignment needs to be done also. You'll find the link to the assignment in the Google Classroom and suggest that you complete it within one week of this session when everything is still fresh. Um, also a reminder that all assignments must be completed before the end of July. If you're serious about creating your own book, you might want to join us for one of our other Flexbook sessions. If you haven't already taken it, Getting started with front flexbooks is really, really good, and it really gets you going. Advanced flexbook editing will help you with some more kind of advanced techniques in creating really powerful, engaging books. Also new this year, we have live chats on Friday the 20th. Um, we'll be going and giving you the opportunity to speak with other education educators in your region or field. So register today through the CEP Google Classroom. And if you'd like, you can register for more than one because they are going to be held at different times. Another new offering this summer is an up close and personal conversation with CK12's co-founder and executive director, Niru Kosla. She will be answering your questions live during this unique and frank discussion about CK-12 and the future direction of digital education. If you have a question for Niru, please send it by next Tuesday to jumpstart at ck12.org, and we'd love to answer it live and hear what Niru has to say. As we've noted before, we have one feedback form for this program, and we hope you'll use it during our webinars. We've gotten some great feedback so far, both for what's going well and what we could do to make the experience better for you. And we'll continue to incorporate suggestions this summer and in future trainings. This isn't mandatory, but if you're interested in giving us feedback, this form is also available in the Google class under feedback topic. So thank you so much for joining us. And we will continue to stay on and answer questions right now. But um, at this point, if you need to go, you're welcome to go. Also, feel free to email us with any questions you might have at jumpstart at ck12.org. All right, so Lindsay, let's um, go take a look at some of the questions in the Q&A window. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my screen again. Um, so we have a question about our offline reader. 
And a couple things I want to share with you of rearrange some windows here. Um, CK12.org, we've got a lot of really great information in our footer of our page. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, there is a tools and apps page here that's going to give you a little bit more information about um, our apps. Um, so Flexbook online and offline access. Uh, with the free CK12 Flexbook app for smartphones and tablets, users have the power to read the entire collection of CK12 Flexbooks, textbooks, anytime, anywhere, even without connectivity. So if we go back over to my IB film book that I started here, uh, not, not much to be reading offline, but um, over to the left, we have an offline reader. It says, new feature. The offline reader is now available. Experience and manage your Flexbooks in a whole new way. Let me click on that. And I've got a couple of options here. I can open immediately in the Flexbook reader to read the Flexbook offline, manage books in one place. So my book is probably a terrible example for this because I just embedded a video. And a video is not going to play offline. Okay, so my IB film book is, is, is a bad example for the reader, but so much of our content, like our, our, our CK12 Flexbooks, um, heavy on text where you can, you know, the students are going to get the information likely that they need without the video options. Um, so yeah, do be aware that not everything is available offline, but with the offline reader, students are able to download a read at a time a chapter at a time, the whole book at a time, um, you know, whatever chunk they want to put on a phone or device, and it's going to open up um, in a pretty slick reader, and it's more of a Kindle type reading experience for them. So maybe that helps. Um, then there was a question, um, can I embed QuietTube to avoid showing the ads and keep students on my chosen video? I've, I've never heard of QuietTube. Um, I'm going to Google it. We're writing it down. Uh, yeah, again, my, that example that I just did was, was terrible because we do not want to be pulling videos that have advertisements, especially with young students. Um, I don't know if that's YouTube and it was just a, a typo or no, I'm guessing that there's probably, maybe there's a third party. Okay. Carl just pulled it up. It looks like it's a third party app. Um, I'm not sure to be honest with you. Um, I think that sounds like a great idea. If there's something that blocks ads, block the ads. Um, if you have any specific questions like that, um, Star, who's been answering all of your questions, um, she receives your emails at support at ck12.org. And so that's a question that's over my head um, related to technology. You can email us at support at ck12.org and we could try to give you more information about that. Um, one of the questions within this assignment for this session asked about the types of questions in the digital practice tool. However, you guys never covered that. How can I find out about this feature to complete my assignment? Um, good question. We, we briefly mentioned um, questions in our slideshow, and I think, I forget how the question's worded in the assignment, um, but we can take a look at that actually and, and probably edit that if that's going to be a blocker for anybody. Um, with, with questions in a non-STEM area, I said you have to go through our quiz tool to get to the questions. So when you're in the library, where I created a new Flexbook, that's also where you can create a new quiz. And I didn't go into this because I think I, I yapped too much and we went a little bit too long here. Um, but within the quiz window, this works flawlessly for, for STEM subjects, right? Because I would just come down here and I would choose my concept and say, oh, well, I want, I want arithmetic and I want whole numbers, we're working on multiplication. Yes, I want higher order one digit multiplication word problems. And so when I select that, um, I can see there's 23 questions in my bank and the, by default, the system just chose 20 of them for me. So you go in here and edit. All right, so you don't want these multiplication problems, right? But our system is set up for the STEM users in this one area. You can still create questions. If you press edit, I'm going to get rid of most of these questions. And up here it says that I can add a question. And so you have the ability, any of our users can add questions. And on our keynote slide and on your resource, 
I showed you this option where these are the different question types that you can create. And so our interface looks a little different depending on um, what type of question, right? Um, true, false is just gonna give me two selections. We have a drag and drop where I can put things into different categories. Um, when you create your own question, um, it's gonna be a really good question. Um, when I submit my question, uh, it's my question's too terrible, it's not gonna take it. Um, uh, okay, so now we've got my question and we've got true false. Let's see if it'll take this one. Okay, my question has been saved. Great. When we go back to my quiz, my question is gonna show up right there. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bad example. So I could flip this, I could look at my question, but basically if you are somebody who's interested in creating digital quizzes, I can get rid of this question, I can build my own questions, 10 questions, 20 questions. I have different settings for my quiz where I could let them have different um, number of attempts, I could put a time limit on it, and I could save and I could do that quiz. So um, Katie talked about that yesterday, I think. We're gonna be doing a couple more sessions later this week on customizing practice. And that's where we'll talk more about these questions if you're interested. Um, we'll take a look at the assignment and uh, maybe, maybe revise it if I forget. If, if I ask something that I didn't cover, that's not fair. Just, just put that in the assignments and I'll be a good teacher and, and let that pass. Um, did you discuss what license CK12 oper operates under in the beginning? Um, yes, we are the CC by NC 3.0 license. Uh, you can Google that. It's a Creative Commons um, license that essentially is saying you can, you can take our things, you can remix, you can adapt, you can adjust, uh, but don't sell it. Um, and so when you put content up on CK12, you're gonna check a box saying that you are license compliant. And Lindsay, can I um, have you, oh, sorry. I want to demo one quick thing here based on what you did with um, uh, photography. Can you go search for photography up on the window, the, the search window again? Yes. And it's just one quick little tip as people, we still have 69 people with us, so let's make sure they get a special something for sticking around. One thing I want you to see here is click on community contributed. And one of the things that I encourage you to do is filter down in the category section on the left and only look at Flexbooks. And this is a great way as you're looking for content to find whole books that deal with that topic. So for example, you mentioned Steve Pulitzer, like he has two books, Digital Imaging 1 and Digital Imaging 2, that are great books if you're doing a Photoshop class at your school. And they are really effective, wonderful books. So sometimes when you're looking for content on CK12, by clicking on the Flexbooks category in the filters on the left, you're gonna end up with some really good content that maybe you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So just a little helpful hint as we wrap up here. Okay, it looks like we've got another question in. If I create a content uploaded here, could I also still sell it on uh, TPT Teachers Pay Teachers? Sharing it free here, but for the price somewhere else. Um, I believe that would be in violation of the copyright agreement. Um, free means free here. Uh, if you're creating it um, because you've probably uh, adapted it. I, I mean, there, there's some gray area here of if you created it, if it's your own original work, um, I don't know. You would be best to email support at ck12.org for any questions like that if you're at all unsure. For the most part, like just if you start talking about selling anything that's, that's also on our site, we, it, it just gets complicated because we are a non-revenue, non-profit trying to give everything away to, for free to everybody. So if you have any specific questions about that, um, just shoot us an email. Alrighty, with that, I think we've cleared out the queue and we've come to an end of this non-STEM uh, session. And I hope you've learned something and will join us over the next few days for so much great content. I know tomorrow I'm doing a teaching strategies in the afternoon and we also have a Common Core books in the morning. So, the other way around.
I'm in the morning and Common Core is in the afternoon. So anyway, join us tomorrow or we'll see you again next week. Thanks so much.